In 2012, a group of former Rare employees sought to do something that hadn't really been sought to do with before -eth create a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. They teased many people with their Twitter account under Minji Jongo, one of the scariest Banjo bosses there is, and we started getting a glimpse. Then, seemingly disappearing and going radio silent in 2014, all hope was lost until it re-emerged as what we have today, a little studio called Platonic Games. A studio made up of former Rare devs? Sign my Rare N64 love and butt up, Project Ukulele was a go. The game was crowdfunded by Kickstarter and far exceeded its goal. This meant people were still clamoring for a Banjo-style platformer, even if it wasn't Banjo itself. If Rare wasn't going to give us 3E, then maybe at least we could get something in its stead? So what happened? Why was this game that seemingly had everything right going for it buckle under the pressure? Was it plagued by issues, as everyone says? Was it bland and soulless? Nay, I say! My name is Jiggy Lookback, and I'm a ukulele defender. Per usual, I asked several communities what they liked or disliked about ukulele and received a lot of feedback. Let's take a look at the common complaints, starting with big worlds. Wait, that doesn't feel right. There we go. Ukulele does in fact have some pretty big worlds. Tribal Stack Tropics, a wide open jungle stage, Glitter Glaze Glacier, a wintry ice level stage with a castle, Moody Maze Marsh, a pumpkin filled log hopping swamp, Capital Casino, an illegal underground casino under construction, and Galleon Galaxy, a far, far away sailing adventure. All of these centered around the massive Hyvory Towers. The interesting thing about the critique of big levels is so many said that the feeling happened when the levels expanded. Level expansion is a gimmick in ukulele where when you enter a level and collect enough pages, the main collectible of the game, you can expand the level into an even larger variant. So, what was once considered big and maybe sort of empty is now bigger and maybe even more empty. It also requires you to exit out of the level, expand it, and then pop back in. Just an unnecessary step. If you look at what changes in the levels too, sometimes it's barely noticeable. Tribal Stack Tropics gives you a boss fight, an entire tower to climb, and a smaller puzzle tower with a unique friendly NPC. While Glitter Glaze Glacier gives you the icy metric palace. Both feel like they should have just been in the level to begin with you also will get slews of new challenges for more pages in the level. The worst example of expansion comes from the very minor alterations with Capital Casino. You can see most of the machines to get pages beforehand under construction. It just feels like it adds a few unnecessary steps to unlock something that probably should have just been unlocked once you got the level. So many people had the comment, and I agree with it, that we should have gotten more levels instead of five with expansions. Just get rid of the expansion idea entirely or perhaps treat it like a new game plus and add it in. The big levels critique has a sub critique, which is the placement of the quills. These are essentially the notes from Banjo, but rather than unlocking paths in the hub, they allow you to purchase moves from Trouser. Each level has 200 quills. These are sporadically placed across the map. You can find them behind bushes, on top of rocks, in the background, or just lying in front of you. It seems that rather than just keeping quills in areas that you would likely be traversing, they opt to place them all over and try to get you to explore. I like the concept, but they are few and far between and it ends up making collecting all of them a slog. The good news is, you seem to have plenty of buffers since all you use these for is to buy moves, unless you want to 100% of course. With all that being said, are these levels inherently bad? No, they aren't. Everyone seems to have a different opinion on what levels are good, which means there's nothing dramatically wrong with any of them, but it's a kind of pick your poison situation with what you like or dislike in platformers. You'll have moments of frustration and you'll have moments where you think, oh that was fun. It's just those moments come and go so often. It doesn't help that the overarching hub world is nothing to sneeze at. It's large and not super interesting. It's not boring, but nothing special when compared to something like Grunty's Lair or the Isle of Hags. It functions, but it's just not special. On to the next common complaint, the gameplay. Now, this isn't necessarily the case for the gameplay as a whole. A few people pointed out camera issues, but as someone who lived in the 3D platformers, it's pretty par for the course. The real gameplay issue comes as a side effect from having the massive worlds. Your traversal is limited. Platonic gave you a sweet move to be able to move quickly around the world, but then they done went and done it and added a mother grabbing stamina bar. Why is this a thing? I'm just going to go on a small tangent to express my deep, deep disdain for stamina meters in games. It makes sense for some applications like Spider-Man running out of webbing shots and it needs to recharge. But in Zelda, running drains it, using a weapon drains it, climbing drains it. I never want to see a stamina bar in a 3D platformer ever again. Let me put it to you this way, Ukulele's fast movement is essentially the talent trot from Banjo-Kazooie of this game. Imagine playing Banjo-Tooie and being limited to how long you can use the talent trot. 
This is a major design issue, not to mention you have so many moves that utilize the same stamina bar. There were times I might be mid-fight or mid-platforming and have to just stand there and wait for the bar to refill before I could do anything. Anything that would make you slow down in a game like this is an oversight. However, generally the actual moveset and abilities you get for the pair work well enough and some are fun like turning invisible and spin dashing through a glass wall. I should also add you have some banjo style transformations to change up the gameplay. They're unique and fun, but generally these move slower than ukulele. Kind of the same deal as before. Anything that slows down the gameplay should be revisited and adjusted. The third complaint, the plot. The world of ukulele is filled with colorful NPCs, and though I heard a few complain about them, generally the reception for these characters seemed positive, especially for our main duo and our main villain, capital B. The plot, however, is something a lot of people seem to feel was pretty bland. Essentially, Capital B is stealing books from all over the world looking for the one book apparently our duo found just prior. This causes them to pursue the book and its pages that flew off with a mind of their own. They don't really have an attachment to this book. It's not Yuka's grandfather's book or anything special, it's just something they found. Capital B was actually looking for this book, but used Yuka and Lily to gather its pages for him. That's it, that's the plot. It's very lighthearted, which I think is a good thing, but I agree, it gives the vibe our heroes are just bored and could quit at any time, which actually may have been a funnier ending. Like, what if they just beat Capital B and they're like, ah, you know what, we don't care, you can keep the book. With this plot though, we just didn't have the sense of urgency like we did in Banjo to go save our sister before her transmodification. It could have used more time to cook, which you could say about a lot of this game. Now complaint 4. Level goals in minigames. I'm merging these two into the same category. The level goals to collect pages range from fighting bosses to simply finding a pagey on a platform or hidden spot. I think any fast collectible pagey is nice. Thankfully, there isn't much backtracking, at least outside of a level, aside from the hub itself. Though minigames like Rextro cause you to play his game, get a pagey, and then he says he'll give you another if you do it again. And these minigames are really nothing special. I really enjoyed the first one where you played as Cardos. Other than that, I didn't really like them. I've really noticed a trend between all the rare style games. They like mini games to break up the action, but often they just aren't the greatest. Maybe they should try not adding them onto the next game, or they should really just lessen them. Not to mention the Dr. Quack quizzes, which are clearly a callback to Grunty's Furnace Fun or Tower of Tragedy. These are basic and happen too often. It should have just been once at the end, but there are three. They're small, but there are three. And Cardos, a friendly minecart, has a minigame in each world where you have to collect gems. The controls for braking and speeding up get a little sloppy. I often would get close to the requirement of the track and lose by like one or two gems, or get hit at the end and have to restart. Thankfully, you only have to beat them once. We do have welcome additions to the worlds though. The Ghost Riders are fun to collect and find. Using powers like glowing in the dark and traversing a dark cave is really cool. Even things like Racing Nimble offer some variety and fun. Now what are my thoughts with all these complaints being said? I played this game in launch day, and I remember liking it, but not loving it. We're playing this again, I gotta say, I had a lot of fun. It's got the charm I'd expect from a banjo style game, from the banter to the simple jokes, like a pagey just slip sliding out of its cage after it won't open, basically implying they could do that the whole time. It made me laugh. The characters and world building here was quirky and fun, though it would have been nice to see some more enemy variation rather than the same enemies with slightly different hats or colors. At times I could get frustrated too with the previous stamina bar issue mentioned, but all in all I found myself being sucked in and excited to play it after work every day for this video. The camera functions as well as Kazooie, to some it may feel archaic but to me it feels right at home. The levels, though big, have such a large buffer for pages and quills that you don't have to collect everything. You only need 100 pages to get to the last boss and the game has 145. That's a pretty decent buffer. Having certain moves allowed me to be creative and maybe use the environment to navigate around an obstacle in a different way than intended. Some may see that as a design flaw, but I personally love that stuff. Being creative in the space and rules you're given is what I think often makes games like this fun. And while you're having fun running around, you are blessed to be listening to some bangers from Grant Kirkhope, David Wise, and Steve Burke. This creates a beautiful aesthetic and ambience to each world. I particularly love Tribal Stack Tropics. It's so good. Not to mention the graphics are beautiful. They even have a love letter 64-bit tonic, which are basically cheat codes to make the game look like an N64 game. Man, I love that addition. More games should do that. Is Ukulele a perfect game? No, of course not. But it's a good game, and you should really give it a shot, especially if you love rare platformers on the N64. I'm really excited for Platonic, and I hope they're making another Ukulele game in the 3D platforming style. Until then, I'm gonna move on to Impossible Lair. Well, that's all I have for you. Sonar, blast that like button for me, and while you're at it, shoot a nice ball in that subscribe button. 
You may even want to check out some of my other videos if you like this one. Until next time, have a good one. Jiggy, look back!